I have had the crappiest day that a person could possibly have without incurring some sort of physical or emotional trauma. Would you like to hear the tale? Here's what it is in short. Uh, this is not my truck. I am, I was afforded the opportunity to go retrieve a truck. I'm currently just outside of Knoxville, Tennessee. Normally, when you see me, I am either in Indianapolis or I am in St. Louis. I go back and forth between the two places. This time, uh, my company had me go out and pick up this truck that I'm currently laying about in um, uh, because it was... To make a long story short, the, the person was terminated and it was afforded me the opportunity to go and retrieve it. Having said that, I probably should have just said no. But me, always wanting to help and always wanting to be available and to a small extent, always wanting to come to the rescue, I said yes. And it wasn't, that, no, it, it was, it was bad, it was bad. First, I found out that I was going to go on an airplane, and I love being on airplanes, they're so much fun. Uh, it's just, it, a lot of people go on airplanes all the time, so it's not really that big of a deal to them. But to me, it's like I'm five years old again. It's like, what? Oh, my God, I'm on an airplane. And I got some really awesome photos and a, a couple of really cool videos. Um, I'm going to see if I can figure out how to upload them to YouTube. Anyway, so I get on a plane uh, from Indianapolis to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. The flight was delayed. In the process of me being on the plane, I had to wait there. We all had to wait there for like 20 extra minutes. So when I got to Charlotte, I literally had to race all the way down the airport just to get to my other flight. And I got there just in the nick of time. Um, there was a couple of other stragglers behind me, but... Uh, the, the Charlotte airport is not properly labeled they had huge magnificent labels behind huge obnoxious pillars and so you couldn't see them you had to see them at like an angle you couldn't see them when you were just coming you know straight on and I got lost and I had to run back and forth and of course my legs hurt and I'm sweaty and I haven't showered in like two days and it's very uncomfortable Nevertheless, I made it to my flight just in the nick of time. Um, got there, had to wait some more. The plane that I got on was even smaller and crappier than the previous one. The, pr the first one I thought, okay, well, this is, it's an all right plane, but it's, you know, it's like driving your mom's Honda Civic. You're like, you know, I could do better than this. But nevertheless, it was a fully functioning and very nice airplane. I thought, okay, well, the next one I get on, it's going to be bigger and better. Or at least, you know, better. No. It was smaller and worse. The AC on the plane didn't work. It was blowing lukewarm air. And I was sitting like, you know, like this, hunched, you know, scrunched up next to the guy next to me, and of course, I'm sitting there, and I just ran, so I'm sweaty, and I'm in my, my track suit thing, it's not really a track suit, it's my workout clothes, and I didn't put on deodorant this morning, because I was in a big rush, so I'm sitting there, cooking in my clothes, sitting next to this guy, he didn't say anything, he didn't give me any weird looks, but I felt so self-conscious about how I 
smell. I'm very, very careful about how I smell. Uh, it's one of the things that I would be absolutely mortified if someone came up to me and said, hey, dude, you stink. I would, oh my gosh, I would just die of embarrassment. Um, but nevertheless, I was hot and uncomfortable and the seats were like a fifth smaller than the other ones. I felt like I was sitting in a very narrow cardboard box. It was very uncomfortable. And finally, when the plane took off, I was able to move up a seat because the two seats in front of me uh, were unoccupied. So we, um, I, I let the guy next to me have his own little space. He was dressed in really nice clothes, too. <laughs> I was like, this guy seems really nice, and I'm probably stinking over here. Luckily, I, I didn't stink. I, But, you know, I was deathly afraid that he was going to be like, ugh, gross, this guy, you know. Um, for those of you that don't know, fat people sweat a lot more than regular people. And you sweat in areas that you were like, why in the world am I sweating here? But it's, you do. You know, even if you're uh, not that overweight, you'll start to notice. One of the first things that you're going to notice is that you'll sweat in areas that you think it's really weird, like underneath your pecs um, and like in the middle of your stomach. It's really weird. It's just, it just shows up. Uh, anyway, off the gross subject, uh, went from Charlotte to go pick up this truck and I freaking Uber would not take my card for whatever reason. Um, I'm not trying to knock noob. I'm not trying to knock Uber. I've used them many times with other people. They've been very, very helpful, very nice people, a very good program. But I don't know why they won't take my card. Um, it's it's the same card that my friend uses when we go, you know, long distances away from our trucks when we hang out. And I just anyway, I couldn't figure it out. So I downloaded Lyft. Lyft worked spectacularly. No problems at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, I downloaded Lyft, um, and then I went to the bathroom, uh, and I got done washing my hands, and I got a text from the Lyft app telling me that my driver was about to leave. And I was like, wow, he really got there fast. So I had to run to him. I get to this place, and the truck is sitting there. The truck, it may not look it, but it is covered in at least an eighth of an inch of strange, mysterious brown goop. It's not what you think it is, but it's like so that this guy was disgusting. Okay, and I, I used to clean out cars all the time uh, for many years. And, you know, you get a couple of really nasty ones. This one's a nasty one. This one is a nasty one. It's every surface is sticky. The steering wheel, the the buttons on the on the door, um, the Qualcomm, the computer in the truck. I mean, just every inch of it. It's like, oh my gosh! You know, when I get a smudge on my screen, I wipe it off because it bothers me. Or if I know there's dirt somewhere, you know, about once a month I'll go through my truck and really just wipe every surface down, um, just because it gets dust everywhere but this one the fridge is disgusting i'm afraid to even open it i'll probably be mauled by some sort of radioactive monster um and he left a bunch of his stuff in here he left he left a box of chocolates gift wrapped for christmas in his truck uh i promptly uh discarded them because they were soggy and causing a problem so if he gets mad at me i'll buy him a new new box of chocolates but the refrigerator surface is gross there's sticky like somebody spilled soda a bunch of times and never once cleaned it up you know i feel like i'm inside a, a toddler's truck you know it's like come on man clean up your mess even if it's just you that's disgusting okay I mean, it's hard for some people to clean up their messes, but it's not impossible. 
You can take it to places and they'll clean it for you for a price. Anyway, after all that, I am just totally and completely exhausted. I want to be at my I want to be in my own truck, but I'm pretty tired. So I pulled over. I have this microscopic blanket. And I'm sleeping like this as a makeshift pillow. But you know what? This guy's in a good mood because I am finally down to the 260s. Mm hmm. That's right. Down to the 260s. I finally got past that ridiculous thing. I'm where I was a month ago. Uh, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, I just gained 20 pounds. Um, I didn't have any emotional stress. I didn't have. I, I guess I just lost focus and just kind of fell off the wagon. Anyway, I'm definitely dedicated to being a lot better now. Um, I almost drank uh, Monster, uh, but I decided not to. And as a matter of fact, uh, a lot of you penny pinchers out there are going to criticize me for this, but I'm going to dump it out because um, I bought the sugary one, the really big one that's just loaded with sugar and stuff. Um, cause I was getting really tired, uh, and I wanted to finish the shift, but I was like, you know what? I just, I need to do the right thing as a professional driver and pull over. It's the right thing to do. I don't want to, I just want to be in my own truck playing my Xbox, you know, just, I just want to be in my own, my own place. But you know, you have to do the right thing. You have to do the correct thing. And the correct thing for me was to pull over and go to sleep. So I'm probably making a YouTube video rather than sleeping. Um, yeah, 267. I feel really good. Uh, that marks officially 20 pounds that I've lost. Uh, or in about 18 pounds. Uh, but still... Really good progress. I'm very proud of myself. I just weighed myself. Uh, <laughs> I feel really good. I was afraid to weigh myself uh, because I I screwed up so bad last weekend. I was just like, oh, man, I'm so embarrassed. I don't want to weigh myself because I'm probably like 290. And, oh, man, I just felt so bad. But, you know, hard work and perseverance really pays off. Hard work and perseverance really pays off, and it's you just got to keep on keeping on. You know, you have to come to a point to where you want it more. You want to lose the weight more than you want the burger in front of you. You know, and it's I heard a really good quote from uh, my 600 pound life. I'm sure this is a quote from something else. So uh, if you know where the quote came from, please let me know in the comment section. Um, but the quote was, uh, life is a journey that you need to take one step at a time. But sometimes that first step is getting on your feet. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, man, that is so awesome. You know, such a good quote. And it's... It was so good. You know, I watched the, that particular episode where the quote was, uh, was a, a young lady. She was about 5'52", I want to say. Um, but she got down to, like, in the 290s, and then she got her skin removal, and she just looked really great. Uh, but it, <laughs> you know, I, I really wish that I could just shake these people's hands because it's... It's such an inspiration to watch these people go from this really low point in their life to, you know, being on cloud nine and having strong morals. And it's it's really something. It's really something. It's just really great. So it's about 15 minutes now. So I'm going to call it a night. Uh, this has been Marshall Paris. You guys have an awesome day.